Welcome back to Bad Writing. Howdy, my name is Joshua Fields Milburn. I'm an Emmy-nominated and New York Times best-selling author and also a writing professor over at howtowritebetter.org. Today's example of bad writing comes from a very famous author. His name's John Grisham. This book is called Suli. I was at my local library last week, just going through different books. I was actually looking for examples of good writing, and I found one of the most famous authors in the world. Now, John Grisham is a talented novelist, and, well, he's one of the most well-known novelists in the world, one of the best-selling novelists. So this is a great example of how even some of our best writers can create writing that is not very compelling. And so just because someone is a great writer, it doesn't make them immune to bad writing. We all write poorly from time to time. So I wanted to use him as an example today as, well, an example of bad writing. As I was walking through the library, I flipped to the, uh, the first page here in the book, and here's what I read. Chapter one, in April, when Samuel Suleiman was invited to try out for the national team, he was 17 years old, stood six feet two inches tall, and was considered to be a promising point guard, known for his quickness and vertical leap, but also for his erratic passing and mediocre shooting. Okay, well, there are two reasons that this is a bad opening sentence. The first reason is it only communicates. Sure, it tells me something about the main character, it introduces a main character, and it lets me know that it's going to be about basketball. Now, I could have seen that from the cover as well, but it's nice to include that in the first line. So that's not an example of bad writing, but it is strictly communicative, meaning it's only communicating. It's not expressing much of anything. It doesn't make me feel anything viscerally, even though I understand something emotionally about the writing. So that's the first reason that I wouldn't open a book with a sentence like that. However, I think what really makes it bad writing is it lacks versimilitude. Now that is a fancy $10 word that just means it doesn't seem very real. If you know anything about basketball at all, I used to play basketball and a lot of my friends watch basketball with me. They don't talk like this. When you're talking about dribbling the ball, you're talking about someone's handle. You're not talking about his mediocre shooting skills. And so if you're going to write about something about which you do not know, you don't understand the everyday vernacular, that's okay, you're welcome to write about that. But do some research, watch a few basketball games, listen to how the announcers talk about the game itself because they would never talk about a game in this fashion. And that as a reader, it takes me out of the reading. It takes me out of the story because anyone who knows anything about basketball is not going to talk about basketball that way. Of course, we can contrast that with another book I found at the library and I have been engrossed by this book. Now, first off, much better cover than John Grisham's book. This one is called Acts of Service by Lillian Fishman. And not only does it have a great cover, but I flipped to the first page and instantly I was engrossed. I had hundreds of nudes stored in my phone, but I'd never sent them to anyone. The shots themselves were fairly standard. My faceless body floating in bedrooms and bathrooms and mirrors. Whenever I took one, I fell in love with it for a moment. Standing there, naked and hunched over my little screen, I felt overwhelmed with the urge to show someone this new iteration of my body. But each photo seemed more private and impossible than the last. <sighs> There's a whole world in that opening paragraph. And by the way, this is exactly how you would talk about it if you could talk about it in the most beautiful way. It's soft. It's sensual, it's sensuous, it makes me want to know more. First off, I don't even know the gender of the main character. Is it a man? Is it a woman? I don't know, it makes me want to read more, but also, who is this person who's so fascinating, fascinated with their own body? And why are they so fascinated? And what are they doing with these pictures? <gasps> I'm asking questions right now. That means, this is a compelling story. That's how you compel the reader. That's how you make them 
want to read more. And if you make them want to read more, that is a sign of good writing. If you want some more writing tips, I have a free book that you can download over at howtowritebetter.org. It's called 15 Ways to Write Better. And you can read it in less than an hour and you'll walk away today with 15 tips that will help your writing right now.